Hey, a quick backstory for context. A couple of videos ago, I gave you a tour of my server rack right here, which had parts, but it was laying around, did not have a 3D printer, so I couldn't print any mounts for it. And if you've ever tried to kit out a rack like this without a 3D printer, you know the pain. Either you buy mounts for every specific machine that you're gonna put, and you know what you're gonna buy in the future, or you buy a mount praying that it will fit your machine. I had my Raspberry Pi that's running Home Assistant dangling like a Christmas ornament. <laughs> And in that video, I promised I will show you when I get my 3D printer and I can print mounts, how my server rack's gonna look like. From 10 feet away, this thing looks awesome. It's clean, it's organized, everything's got a home. All the Raspberry Pis are mounted, uh, those short patch cables from the patch panel to each Pi, yeah, that's nerd art. I moved the switch from the top to the bottom so I could route most of the ethernet up the right side and fan out the pies, the mini PCs, and whatever else. I also have an ethernet cable running from that to a network switch that actually gives internet to my PlayStation, my docking station that has my MacBook and where I work. Functionally, everything is great, but here's where I actually started losing my mind. I'm new to 3D printing. So what I did, I hunted down files. And what I mean by that is the 3D files for devices like you see in my rack. I scoured sites like Maker World and Printables for 10 inch rack mounts for mini PCs. I found a couple for Dell, printed one, looked good. Then I did the same for an HP Mini, printed that, and from the front, totally different corner radiuses, different screw area designs, slightly different rear shape. Um, not the end of the world, since you don't really see the back, but that's fine. Here's the weird part. On the mounts themselves, the screw holes are evenly spaced. Three holes per side, equal distance between them. You'd think the rack's rails would match that, right? <sighs> nope. For some reason, someone please explain this to me in the comments, the hole spacing on my 10 inch rack rails is just not the same. So if I line up the top two screws, the bottom ones are like five millimeters off. If I drop it down a notch to catch the bottom holes, now there's a gap between the devices that waste precious space and looks janky in a dense build. So what did I do? I did crimes. I took a soldering iron, and melted the slots bigger. Yeah, I know, it hurt me too. You widen the hole, the plastic curls, it thickens the face, and then the screw sits weird. I had to do it on almost every mount that you see. Sometimes it was the top pair, sometimes the bottom pair, and up close, a few of them look uh, a little rough. Functionally, fine, aesthetically, <laughs> That pain taught me the fix though. I should have stopped using fixed holes, use vertical slots, keep the width of the hole the same as the screw head, but make a single long vertical slot so you can land the screw wherever the rail holes are. You get the flexibility to micro adjust. It compensates for rack variances. And if you bump the thickness up a bit and added filled ends, you won't lose much strength. I did a rough mock-up and I'm going to reprint my mounts with the elongated vertical slots when I get a chunk of time. That alone would have saved me hours and some melted plastic shame. Most of my current mounts though are from online models except the patch panel. That was my first real from scratch 3D design and it actually worked great. I bought these RG45 uh, inline couplers, basically cheap extension jacks, and designed a panel to snap them in. Because they're lightweight plastic, the load on the panel is low so it's, it's forgiving. I do a few things differently. Measure with a caliper, not a ruler. I eyeball the dimensions for the screw post at at first and uh, tolerance is a thing. Use vertical screw slots here too. Uh, tighten the coupler's opening by 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters because uh, PETG tolerances can be a little slippy and a tiny lip or retention tab goes a long way. Even with those notes, the patch panel is solid. Clean cable pads and it feels uh, custom. No easy labeling though, that's something I need to fix. It's nice when uh, something you modeled actually works in the real world. Now the current layout, mini PCs, a Raspberry Pis, Nvidia Jetson Nano, a patch panel, and a network switch at the bottom. I've got a blank plate sitting above the HP PC. Uh, it's a reserve for a third mini PC so I can build a proper three node Proxmox cluster. Uh, the Dell and HP are already in a Proxmox cluster, but with two nodes, you don't really get a quorum. Uh, three nodes means if one dies, 
the other two can keep the critical apps online and high availability actually behaves. That's important here because I'm running a bunch of services. I don't want to babysit after a single node failure. So that blank blade is a, a promise to feature me. NAS wise, uh, NAS, if you don't know, is network attached storage. So it's like an alternative to your Google Drive or iCloud. I miscalculated the space. I thought I should shoehorn a NAS into this 10 inch rack and uh, maybe I still can. Uh, there's some room near the Jetson and I might be able to squeeze a three bay if I go creative with the drive orientation and cooling, but that's probably a separate build with a better enclosure plan. Okay, let's talk failures because there were plenty. Since this is a 10 inch rack and my build plate isn't huge, I had to print some mounts diagonally and that pushes your usable area to its edge, which is where adhesion gives out a little bit. A couple corners just did not print well, a few prints spaghettied, and one time I tried being clever by slicing the whole plate diagonally and then hopefully i could super glue it together and like the whole plate would just sit together and be flush that was for the raspberry pi from the image you can see how i printed it it did not work the way i wanted it to the glue would just not hold it together for a real first go at 3d printing parts for my server rack i'm super happy everything is mounted cable management is civilized airflow is decent and even the stuff i had to persuade with a soldering iron is solid in practice if i was redoing the entire thing tomorrow i would do one thing really specifically i would create a 3d modeling template that has the length and the screw vertical holes that I was talking about and that would be standard across every single 3d design that I would make for the mini PCs the Raspberry Pis the side mounting rails would have the same vertical slot and the exact dimensions and maybe rounded corners maybe just full like squares or like sharp corners but I would standardize that so the server rack looks even better if you're thinking about doing this and you're new to 3d printing do it download a bunch of models print, test, iterate. I even asked AI to find me options. Uh, I said 10 inch rack mounts for this device or like a Raspberry Pi 10 inch rack tray, stuff like that. You'll get a handful of links from different websites, pick two or three, print at low infill to test the fit and then do the final version once you trust the geometry of it. If you've got better 3D prints that are free and available online, please drop the links in the comments. I would love to test them out. That's it for this one. Let me know what additional things you would like to know about or if I didn't cover anything in this video and I will see you in the next one.